today you see two gorgeous woven tops perfect for hot weather the front has a crossover feature really interesting and different construction i made one with silk that i'll sneak peek right there look at that drape so beautiful stay tuned to see all the details hi sewing friends i'm karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com welcome to this channel that is all about sewing limitless sewing and this episode has some woven sewing for you and this pattern is specifically designed for those really soft fluid drapey woven fabrics really beautiful and what i'm talking about is the alvarez top from each to stitch i don't speak french but let's say alvarez <laughs> i don't know how you say it and it's a really beautiful top it only has three main pattern pieces and then some binding pieces you can see that the front has a crossover feature the front actually crosses all the way to the other side. So at the bottom of the front, you're gonna have two layers at the hip area. The length at the front is around the mid hip and a little longer at the back. These pieces have two layers as I mentioned because they cross over. And at the bottom there, you have a little elastic pulling it in place. You have bastards for shaping. And the way that you finish this crossover neckline and the sleeveless armholes is with bias binding, but in a really different technique that is super suited for lightweight fabrics. You can customize the crossover here according to what you like. You can sew in a little snap. In my case, I couldn't find any, so I've just done a little bit of hand tacking there to keep that in place. It's gonna keep it secure. And the way that this drapes across the front is really beautiful. At the back, you have a separate piece and you have a curved hem. Use a snap. At the back, there's a yoke with a box pleat. The yoke has two layers and it's finished with a burrito rolls. Because the Alvarez top is a brand new pattern, it is 20% off for the first week. And that goes through next Wednesday, the 29th of June. I always mention if you do use my affiliate link to purchase patterns, I do receive a small commission back and that helps support the work that I do here on YouTube. So I'm always very grateful. It does take many, many hours to make these videos and this is one way that I can be compensated financially for the work that I do. So really appreciate it. Thank you. I will leave you all the specific information in the description box below you do really need fabric that drapes so I've got a few here for you to see as examples anything with rayon rayon chali rayon blend with linen would be great I think a rayon twill would be a little too heavy <laughs> a tensile twill would be too heavy as well some like crepes I really wanted to make one in chiffon but I just couldn't make up my mind with a print <laughs> you can use a silk I've chosen for one of them 100% rayon in a print super pretty it's got some red in there to match a red skirt and the other one is green dark green and it's a really rare fabric that i've been hoarding for ages and ages and it's a silk poly blend which is not easy to find the blend there is 53 percent silk 47 percent polyester it looks amazing it's beautiful it is more affordable than 100 percent silk still a little more expensive than just a regular polyester so yeah i had been saving it for something special and perfect for the alvarez top for sure the sizing goes from a double zero to a 40 us up to a 62 inch hip and you have a regular bust option that you would use if your sewing cup size is from a to c or if you measure your high bust and your full bust and the difference is from one to three inches if you measure three or more in the difference between your high bust and your full bust you would use the full bust piece so if you have a sewing c cup you can either choose the regular or the full you know, I've sewn a lot of each to stitch patterns and the full bust option works amazingly for me. I really like the depth of the dart right there. For both versions, you will have a dart. It's just that this bust dart volume is going to be a little bit smaller for the regular bust than for the full bust. The feet of the top is nice and relaxed. You do have quite a bit of space at the bust, around four to five inches of ease around the bust area. Don't worry about the waist, there's a lot of space there. And at the hips, you don't have negative ease if you didn't put that elastic in. But that elastic at the bottom of the front, two layers, has to be there or else it would just deform. So because that elastic is in there, if you look at the measurements chart, you might be confused because you see negative ease, like two and a half inches of negative ease. But that's just because that's what the garment measures once that elastic is in the front. But it's not like the elastic makes it tight on the body. You'll see what I mean when I have it on. It's not tight on me. It just brings it in a little bit, but it's not tight. You still have positive ease in the fabric itself. It's just that elastic at the front makes it a little bit smaller. There are some shorten and lengthen lines there for you to be able to lengthen this if you want to or shorten it. I did some flat pattern measurements and I thought the original length was gonna be perfect for me. So maybe if you're shorter, consider that, that it will look a little longer on you. 
or vice versa. You know, length is always customizable. Now, the only fitting adjustment I did as such was to blend sizes. I didn't just sew one straight size. I have a 12 full bust here on the top, my shoulders and the beginning of this neckline and the top part of the armhole there. And then when you want to blend out to a larger waist and hip, you need to do it on the side seam and all across this also because the way that this crosses over goes all the way to the bottom. So I've got a little diagram for you to see there. Mine is basically from a 12 to a 14 waist to a 16 hip to make the blending really, really smooth. The other little bit of fitting that I did was with the bust start and I just made the shape when I was sewing it a little bit concave, which means it curves in a little bit. I'll put a diagram here as well so you can see. And it's something that I've done before with bust starts just to get a more customized fit. If you have a larger around the bust here, that sort of gives you better shaping than if you sew the dart straight. That is just fine tuning it, you know, because I like to do that. <laughs> I did measure the placement of that pasta and I determined it was perfect for me. I didn't need to lower it or lengthen it. So that was a rare occasion, that was nice. <laughs> and in the sewing, I have filmed almost the whole thing for you. The only thing I didn't film was maybe the back hem because it's just a hem and the binding on the sleeveless armholes but I do show you how to do the binding on the neckline, which would be the exact same technique. There are some areas here that are cut on the bias, which I think is genius in one way, because it keeps this area stable. So you have this area of the neckline that crosses over, that's on straight of grain, but then you end up with the side seam being on the bias, and that makes you have an extra step, little extra precautions, but nothing that is not manageable, and I'm showing you all those details. So let's hop in and see the sewing. Before showing you all my pattern pieces on the table, I really want to get the stay stitching done because there are some pieces here that are cut on the bias. So I'm doing some stay stitching in a lot of places. I'm starting at the yokes at the back. There's two of these. I did a sneaky center back seam on the yoke layer I'm going to use on the inside just because I was running out of fabric. I did have to piece that one. No one's going to see that seam. Along the neckline, I'm stay stitching from the shoulder into the center and then I'm flipping my piece to the other side, starting at the shoulder, going into the center. I do this directionally to keep the shape of the back neckline. I'm also stay stitching these partial armholes on the side, on both sides, and then I'm just going to repeat the same process with the other yoke. Then we take our back piece and I'm also going to stay stitch that partial armhole right there. It is only partial because the rest will be completed once the yoke is in. The pattern uses half an inch seam allowance, so I'm doing all the stay stitching with about three eighths of an inch. It just needs to be smaller than that. Regular stitch length. We are stay stitching these armholes because this is a sleeveless design so it's really really important then we go off to the front there are some areas of the piece that are on the bias others are on the straight of grain and I am starting to stay stitch the armholes also I'm stitching directionally from the shoulders down towards the underarm and I'm doing that on both sides you see I flip the fabric so I can stitch in the same direction and that is so I can conserve the shape symmetrically and then we have the long front that is going to cross over this area of the front is actually on the grain line so I think it's genius so I'm stay stitching this area also I'm doing them both in the same direction so after stay stitching these areas I'm going to sew the bust that I I do need to sew the bust start first because I also want to stay stitch the side seams on the front. Here you can see my bust start. It is actually on part of the white print here so I couldn't mark with uh, any dark marking tool so I marked with light yellow tracing paper. This is a larger dart volume for the full bust. If you're sewing the regular bust your dart will be smaller. I've made my dart concave which means it just goes in there. I'll put a little diagram here so you can see what I'm talking about. It's suited more to the roundness of the side of my bust. Have the tip there very narrow and just curve out and then go off to the wider part than doing it just straight. I thought that was going to give me a better fit at the side of my bust for this design. And as you know, I like sewing my darts from the tip of the dart. I take a lot of care in letting the needle drop into the fabric right on the edge. I don't back tack. I shorten my stitch length there at the start. Okay, here you can see my dart point right there, the thread coming out. 
For the first inch and a half or so, I shortened my stitch length to about 2.2. Then I changed it back to three. And you can see the rounded shape that I've got there. It's not all the way straight. You really want to stay stitch these side seams because it's totally biased right there. That's why I want this that sewn. This can stretch out and then it might not match your back piece. I'm holding it all up in my hand and just trying to guide it along, not pulling or pushing. So I'll just repeat the same thing on the other side. Sew my buster and stay stitch the side seam. If I hadn't have done this and I pull this, it's just going to grow massively. I'm just showing you what the stay stitching does to a piece that's on the bias like here. It just gives it that strength until we sew it onto the back side seam. The neckline and armholes are finished with binding that is sewn slightly different to other methods. We have to be really careful about these, not stretch them out because if you stretch them, they become narrower. So at the ironing board, I'm just pressing these wrong sides together lengthwise, being super careful with manipulation to keep the width of this binding as intact as possible. There are only three main pattern pieces for the Averis top. Up there we have the yokes. You can see on that one I have a center back seam. It is sneaky, it's not supposed to be there. On the layer that's underneath, I have the full piece. So the one with the seam will be on the inside. Here is my back piece. You can see the back has a curved hem. There's gonna be a little box pleat there in the center. This is the front piece. I have already stay stitched this area, which is gonna be the crossover front. This is actually the grain line of the piece. So the side seam and this ends up being on the bias. There is the armhole, it's also stay stitched. The bust that was already sewn like you saw, and I've also stay stitched the side. At the bottom, we're gonna have a piece of elastic. It's 3 8 wide, shorter than what this bottom area measures because that's that's what's going to bring it in at the front and here are the binding pieces you already saw me pressing that lengthwise this long one has a center back seam and that will finish all the front neckline and the back and these two pieces will finish the sleeveless armholes we need to overlap these pieces just follow along just the way you would look down at the fabric the one on your right hand which would be the left wearer's side only that when you're looking down it's on your right hand that one will be on the bottom take the piece that's on your left hand it will be on the right wearer's side this one goes on top and we match them up at the bottom these have to be raw edges together remember the layer that's on the bottom is on your right hand the layer that's on the top is on your left hand all along the bottom this is an edge that is on the bias, so you have to be careful, hold it in your hands, don't let it stretch out and drop, let the feed dogs do their thing. It's half an inch seam allowance here. After sewing this, I'm gonna go ahead and serge it. So here is everything sewn, the both layers together. I'm looking at it from the wrong side of the fabric because that is the side that we're gonna sew this elastic on. Around the bottom, you have some notches. You have a notch away from the side seam and on the other side and one in the middle. If your serging covered it, make sure you've marked it again so you can see them. And then you have your elastic that is specific for each size. I've marked the middle of my elastic there with a yellow chalk. So you can see that we're gonna have to stretch the elastic to match what's underneath and that will just keep the front stay. We're gonna sew this at the sewing machine with a zigzag stitch. I am gonna use a pretty large zigzag stitch. Okay, so on the side, meet the elastic all the way towards the side, but remember there was a notch here. That's where you have to start sewing. So from this pin to the center, I have to stretch to match. Now, as I'm sewing, I want my elastic to cover the seam right there by a tad, like an eighth of an inch. And that's just to try to make the wrong side of the fabric not show when I'm wearing the, the top. And here, take the other extreme and stretch, keep going. Remember, I'm covering the seam with the elastic by a tiny amount. Here is the mark where I have to stop. Now we're just going to trim away this excess elastic right there, same as on this other side. You can see I've got the elastic covering the seam by a hair, just a tiny bit. And that's because we're going to flip it. And when I do that, by having that elastic protrude, this is how the bottom's going to look. I don't want the wrong side of the fabric to be seen. And by having that elastic protruding there, it's like understitching, but not really. So you can see that that is going to keep the wrong area inside by a little bit. I wouldn't want to sew the elastic within the seam allowance because yeah, it would be clean. But then when you wear it, there's a risk of the wrong side showing. Okay, here we have it. We've done the seam. We've added the elastic. And now we're going to take the side that's on the top on your left hand. Take it and flip it. Take both of the sides and just bring it to the other side. And this is how our front is going to be now. We have the seam really neat under there and the elastic inside. So for now, we're going to do a temporary basting stitch just to hold this area together right here where the overlap is. There and there. Before sewing the yoke and doing all the burrito business, 
this I'm gonna do the little pleat at the back this is a box pleat which means that you sew this pleat with the fabric wrong sides together like this there is a little mark and I'm just gonna do a basting stitch right there this will be removed later this is the type of pleat where the box is on the outside so you take the volume and distribute it half and half from that seam that we did and now we baste it on the top and then it's gonna be ready for when we sew it to the back yoke this is how this type of pleat looks on the wrong side now if you wanted this type of look on the right side then you would just sew it in verse you would put your fabric like this right sides together and sew your pleat and then you get this inverted box pleat look on the outside so preference but this is how the pattern does it so I've basted this partial area just to keep this in place we're gonna actually take the basting stitch off later to finish this front neckline but for now this helps it act as one piece and on the top we have the shoulders of the front remember we had two yoke layers I'm gonna take my proper yoke the one that doesn't have the center back seam and put this one right sides together there and then remember I have an inner yoke that has a center back seam just because I didn't have enough fabric so it's easy for me to no. I'm gonna pin these three layers all at the same time. This is the order of events. My inner yoke that's gonna be right side to wrong side of the front and then my other yoke that is right side to right side. So if I remove this front layer my yokes are right sides together but with the front in between. Okay so here I have the shoulder seams pinned. When we sew this afterwards you don't need to serge it because this will be enclosed within the layers. So remember we have two yoke pieces right sides together and in between we have the front piece. The front shoulder pieces are right sides together with the main yoke. In my case the one that is normal. My inner yoke has a sneaky center seam. Okay, so take your main yoke right there. This is the one that's going to be visible on the outside. There's the shoulder seams. And now we are going to take our back piece. We have already sewn the pleat and we're just going to place these right sides together here. Align them and sew them together. Now this seam is just going to be a basting stitch, smaller than the half an inch seam allowance that we need. And just use a longer stitch length. It doesn't really matter. It, the only goal is to keep these layers together because the definite stitch will come after we do the row. Okay, so that's the seam that we've just done. Now we're going to take our other yoke piece, the one that's free, and just put it up there. This is the inner yoke. And I'm just going to take everything and roll it up inside until I can take this edge and meet the other edge with everything inside. And there we have it. All the top is rolled up inside this. And now I can just align these and now do the definite stitch. So I'll do this again. If you're following along, just make sure your pieces look like this. You have all wrong sides facing up like this. This is your free edge the inner yoke that hasn't been sewn we just sewed on the main yoke to the back and just take everything that's under here and just roll it up roll it up keep this seam down there roll 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 flip it until you can meet the free edge of your inner yoke with the yoke that we've already sewn and now we can pin it and sew it at half an inch seam allowance Before turning these right sides out, I'm just going to trim these seam allowances. I'm trimming the shoulder seam allowances to about half both sides and then the seam allowance for the back seam. After trimming all of that, we can now take it out. Now, I don't want to take it out through the neckline here because I want to conserve that. I'd rather just take it out from the side, just flip it. It looks really weird, but then it turns out amazing. Okay, so this has been turned right sides out. This is the front. Here's the inner yoke that has a seam, but you still have the right side of the fabric there. At the back, you have the seam with the pleat coming there. This is a box pleat. That's how it looks. Now, before sewing the side seams, we need to do the neckline. And remember, we had done a temporary basting stitch right here. This needs to be removed now. We just needed to hold these together to do the burrito roll, basically. But we really need these to be separate like that because this is where the neckline starts. And this is where the binding is going to reach. I'm going to put a pin at my center back here. My binding also has a center back seam and I'm going to match it right here and pin it. So the binding is right side to the blouse. I'm going to pin it all the way down. Remember, don't stretch the binding. It's on the bias. Just pin it as normal. All the way down to this edge 
and then I'll start again from the center and go all the way down to the other side. Now we're gonna do a super long seam. I have hand basted my binding on. I don't want it moving anywhere. And we're gonna sew all the way from one front going along the back neckline down the other front. You're supposed to sew this with a half an inch seam allowance, but I think the binding is gonna turn out narrower than what I would like. So I'm just gonna sew it with three eighths of an inch. It won't really make that much of a difference. Here you have some leftover. It's intentional like that. Just snip some away, but not all of it. Now what I'm gonna do is trim the seam allowance down to about half here. And I'm gonna do that all the way along. I'm gonna snip around the back where it's curved, but not along the front, because it's pretty straight. This area in the back here, neckline, where we have more layers because of the yoke is curved. So I'm gonna snip into here. Okay, so before putting the binding towards the inside, we need to understitch it so it stays inside. Basically, you need to push this smaller seam allowance right underneath the binding and sew right there on the edge. I'm going to use my blind hand presser foot with the needle to the left. I have my main piece on the right hand and the binding here flipped this way towards the left. Seam allowance is under the binding. Okay, so now I have the binding towards the wrong side. That's how it's gonna look on the right side. You can see the understitching right there that's gonna keep it inside. I have hand basted this and now I'm gonna go ahead and sew. I'm gonna sew this from the right side. Sometimes I sew it from the wrong side. Okay, here's one of the edges. There's the binding sewn, the two rows. Black one is under stitching and the lighter color one was the top stitching. I did it like that so you could see them, but on the outside, it's black top stitching. Now remember we had some left over. Now I'm just gonna cut following that shape that slant on the front. I'm gonna baste this again. Now I'm gonna baste it so that this is ready to be sewn onto the back. It needs to be basted on so it stays in place. The binding is done. So now we can actually sew the side seams. And I'll repeat this on the other side. Before sewing the side seams, putting back and front together, we need to sew the back hem. So you can see it's quite curved. Now on the pattern it says you have to fold it twice by three eighths, but I think because of the curve it's just easier to fold it once by a quarter of an inch and then by three eighths. You know in the long run a sixteenth of an inch isn't going to really make a difference. So I've already hand basted that tiny little fold of a quarter of an inch all along the bottom and now I'm going to go through it again, fold it and hand baste it again and once I'm happy with the curve then I'm going to top stitch. Okay, so I finally have the side seams pinned. I can sew them and now we'll have a completed armhole. The back hem has already been done. The edge of the back hem is matching the edge of the front there. The front is where you have the elastic in there. So you have all those layers there. They have to be right next to each other. The front here that is on this side, this is the piece that was cut on the bias. And because we stay stitched earlier, both pieces match. If you don't stay stitch it, you might end up with a front that is that much longer. You might think the pattern pieces are wrong. It's just that the fabric would have stretched. So I think it's really, really important to stay stitch that so that you don't end up with this issue. What's also helpful is putting the back, touching the presser foot and having the front on the bottom so that the bottom is managed better by the feed dogs. Once that's done, we can do the binding on the armholes. The binding technique is exactly the same as we did on the neckline. I have my binding pieces ready here. I'll show you the one I made first. I didn't choose to film the tutorial using this one because it's hard to tell what is the right and the wrong side of the fabric and I think you really needed to see that difference because of the way this front is constructed. So this is my silk poly blend. It's very beautiful, it's very light. It's almost transparent here in the light but I don't need to wear anything underneath like a cami, it's fine. <laughs> Here is the crossover and I have done some tiny, tiny hand sewing at the back to keep it in place. You could sew in a little snap, but I just don't have those types of things. Whenever I'm at a shop, I just never remember to look for those specific notions like that. I have to make a list to keep on my phone, you know? Here you can see the binding inside. It's very, very neat. This binding is easier to make. You don't need a bias tape maker. All you have to do is fold it in half lengthwise sew it on, flip it inside. And it is a technique that could be bulky if you did it with heavier fabric because there's two layers there. 
but because this fabric is so lightweight it actually adds structure to this area and I really like the technique. It's not the first time I've seen this technique with itch to stitch. I've seen it before so I just recognized it straight away and I was like oh yep yeah, I remember that I like that as well. The armholes are finished in the same way just remember to always trim the seam allowances smaller snip where you have to where there's curves and hand basting look I did a lot of hand basting with this this fabric had a mind of its own and I really needed to do that two layers with the yoke now you have this type of pleat that is a box pleat that's how it looks on the outside if you sewed it on the inverse it would look like that so I think this is just personal preference. This is the original design, but if you like the pleat to look the other way around, just sew it the other way around. There's nothing wrong with that. And then you have the curved hem. You know, I like to baste my curved hems also to make them as neat as possible. That is sewn onto the side seam right there. What I did here with the side seam was press it towards the back and just tack that bulk of the seam allowance to the hem right there. You know because you had to do the hem of the back separately and then sew it to the front because the treatment of the hem is differently here on the front you have two layers right here I have my bust studs. now these bust studs are actually on the bias so you have to be careful when you're pinning and sewing them to not stretch out your fabric just be careful like always and at the bottom of the front is where we have the two layers with the elastic tucked in in there so with this one because the fabric is the same on both sides I really didn't need to worry that much you know, if a little peep of the wrong side shows when I wear it, it no one's going to notice because it's the same color. And that's why you saw me sewing it in a different way in the tutorial because my other version does have a noticeable difference in the wrong side. Not in this case. Look at this amazing drape. Now, if you ask yourself, why does that elastic need to be there? It does need to be there because all of this front bottom area is on the bias. If you had nothing giving it that stability it would just flop open and the form this just brings it closer to your body and it just looks really nice it just helps with that drape you don't get gathers here when you sew in that elastic even though it's shorter so it's super beautiful I just love it so much so floaty so airy I wish you could touch it and pet it with me I mean it's just amazing and I'm really glad I saved this fabric for a special one like this and let's see it styled bit of a colorful look for you I really enjoy dressing up like that. The touch of red in the skirt, so let's see. This is my first Auvers top from Each to Stitch and I used a silk blended with poly half and half, really pretty in a dark green. You'll see the features up close at the back. You have a shirt tail hem. The front has an overlap feature with an elastic there. Only in the front hem, there's two layers as you can see there. The elastic is tucked in underneath those two layers and this neckline crosses over each other. At the back, you have a curved hem. You can manage the depth of this crossover. I have a little pin right there or you can use a snap. At the back there's a yoke with a box pleat. The yoke has two layers and it's finished with a burrito roll so shoulder seams and the back seam are enclosed. And there's a side buster. There is a standard and a full bust option. The crossover neckline and the sleeveless armholes are finished with bias tape inside and I've used the full bust option. I think the fit is really great. I think it's a really different look and a drapey fabric will look the best with this style because the drape in the front will just look amazing you really don't want to use anything structured for this style. This is my second one. I love this. Now you saw that I did some little shortcuts because I had only one meter of fabric, one yard. So I do have an extra seam right there in that yoke. The binding I made for the sleeveless armholes is also pieced so that I could get my binding. <laughs> I was able to cut the binding for my front normal like the original so that was good. And it's just a beautiful print, so lovely. You know, with prints you can't really see the features that well. But I thought the tutorial would be easier to see because the wrong side is very different to the right side there. So I have my binding in here. It's very neat. You saw how that turned out and the binding right there. The yoke in two layers. You know, sometimes when you have a little seam on the yoke, it's easier to sew the burrito method because you know exactly which is the layer that's going to be inside. 
and the one that's going to be on the outside so this is a clean one with no seam and here is my pleat right there very neat I find if I take the time to hand baste nicely I'll get a really smooth curve right there rayon is really good for these types of curves I think you can get a really nice result with rayon which is harder when the fabric is stiffer like cotton for example and here is the bottom very nice I tacked it there by hand I'd made the green one first so I knew exactly where to do the hand tacking and I'll flip this one so you can see the inside back seam and shoulder seam concealed with the burrito roll two layers of yolks that's nice there is the pleat inverted the inverted box pleat that's how it looks on the inside on the outside it just looks like a box pleat on the front you can see how this goes all the way to the side so it's not that the wrap is partial it's all the way to the other side of the body it wraps the whole way so it's really neat because you have a lot of fabric covering there's no risk of this blowing open or like you showing your abdomen or nothing like that nothing and the hand sewing I did there is invisible very nice elastic tucked in there if you wanted to you could see it I sewed it on with white so you could see what I was doing but no one's ever gonna see that because it's tucked into these two layers I really love it I styled it with my red Quebec skirt which is another pattern from each to stitch I made a few months ago the pops of red in the print there go perfect with the skirt so let's see this is my second Alvarez top, really lightweight and flowy, 100% rayon. It has amazing drape and I think the front crossover feature looks amazing. And I really love the details, I really like everything about this one. I love the colours. I've got it paired with my red Quebec skirt also from Itch to Stitch. Here's a closer look at the front, really really like this, it's so so easy to wear, there's nothing tight or uncomfortable and the curved hem at the back, there are the sleeveless armholes, the binding technique is super cool, my V neckline with the crossover there is held together with a little bit of hand sewing, it's at the depth that I want, a closer look at binding on the neckline, it's very neat and I really like this technique. I'm sure I really want to make more of these, it doesn't take up too much fabric or time to make, it's only three pattern pieces and it's a really nice different look perfect for all the hot weather super breezy and flowy very beautiful I hope you enjoyed seeing this different type of top. It's very different to what you usually see. Just the way that the front comes together is really original. The fact that the piece is cut on the bias to keep the neckline on the grain is really good because if you cut a piece like this on the normal grain line, then what ends up being on the bias is the neckline, which then has the potential to turn out really long and stretch out with any little manipulation that you do. I think it's easier to manage the side seams on the bias than this on the bias so I think that was genius from Kenneth she did an amazing job in the way that she thought this through really enjoyable as always to sew something different and it's so beautiful the way it drapes in the front I know I'm gonna take these out and feel really special when I wear them maybe you want to adopt this binding technique to other projects that you're sewing with lightweight woven fabrics I think it's really easy to manage having both layers there together it's, it's just a really nice technique also and I'm gonna try to remember it more so I can use it in other projects as well just to have another option there in your repertoire of techniques is always really nice remember that the Overs top is on sale for the first week while it's being released so I'll leave you all those specific details in the description box below that's all from me today I hope this was fun to watch and I'll see you again very soon with more sewing bye